Well, hello and welcome to Furious Driving, and today is the day before the NEC Resto Show, the Lancaster Practical Classics, there are many words in some title, event up in Birmingham. It's uh, now, God, it's 10 to 10, crikey, I am really quite late. I've been up since quite early, I was up at 7.30 this morning washing the car outside, the neighbours thinking I was crazy, scraping ice off the roof. I couldn't wash it yesterday because that crazy mud rain happened. Um, so that has put me back a fair bit on the day's beginnings. The car is now very, very loaded. Uh, I was going to take the coupe, the Rover Tomcat, but I don't think I've got everything in there. I've had to make a cup holder. Uh, Draper do everything, it turns out. Uh, the boot is pretty full. This is quite a big trunk, so uh, you can imagine how much stuff is in there. So hopefully you'll come and buy a t-shirt or a hat or a mug or any of the other exciting things we have for you on display on the stand. I think it's stand 4010. I stand to be correct. It's under either Hubnut or YouTubers. Well, let's jump in the car, get on the way to Birmingham. We've got a lot of miles ahead of us. Let's move. Well, we've got a working radio now. We've got an audio uh, cassette player with a bunch of story tapes I've borrowed, Terry Pratchett and the Goon Show and stuff. Plus, of course, I've got my FM transmitter thing so I can listen to the radio off the phone if I need to. Well, a little sit rep just to let you know how we're getting on. The car is doing fine as far as I can tell. Temperatures are all good. Voltage is fine. Lots of information on the dashboard. Uh, hopefully the overdrive is kicking in. I think it feels like it is because it's a long way to go. Another, actually not too far really. 149 miles I think, so not too bad at all really. I put a hundred pounds pretty much dead on of, of unleaded in this thing at the weekend. Hopefully it'll be enough to at least make it there if not back. I've not really driven this car very far before, so it's a bit of a um, well, learning curve really. Uh, I've driven it a couple of junctions up and down the motorway to make sure it's okay at speed and I've driven it around town a little bit and what I've found is that on the motorway it's pretty frugal once you're into a cruise it seems to do pretty good like 30 mpg maybe even and sort of guessing a little bit but stop start around town wow you can just watch the needle drop so I'm sitting here below 70 miles an hour sort of 65 ish just cruising along hopefully sipping meagerly at the petrol and uh, yeah we'll get there about 20 to 1 I hope, I might even be the first one there if, if all goes smoothly. The car actually seems to ride a little bit better and I've got all the t-shirts and things in the back. There's a lot of t-shirts, I reckon I'm carrying something like five or six hundred t-shirts on board. And uh, yeah, that, the weight of that actually sort of calms the, the back end of the car down quite well because it's sprung hard for a lot of like, police equipment in the boot normally. Speaking of stuff in the boot, I do have a spare wheel for the car, the tyre on it it's probably older than I am, frankly, um, but I didn't want to leave with nothing at all and I've gone and found a breaker bar and a socket and a jack out of one of the P6s that will hopefully lift this thing if in the event of an emergency. It's not something I'd like to drive very far on, but it would get me off the motorway if I absolutely had to. Actually, there might even be a tyre supplier at the show. I can go and get a new spare one uh, fitted and mounted while I'm at the show. Oh, I'll just look out for that. Okay, pop master time. I'll probably have to edit Ken out. Who had the Christmas number one in 1990 with the song Saviour's Day? No and idea. It was clear. Yes, oh yeah, Cliff Richard. Complete the title of this hit for the shaman. Move any... Mountain. Mountain. It is mountain. Right, well done. I did awfully. I think I only got one question right on that round, but... To be fair, the contestant only got six points as well. That was a really, really hard round with some really obscure questions. Hopefully round two will be easier. Round two, let's hope I can answer a couple more questions than the last time, because that was awful work the first time round. Didn't even get the Cliff Richard one, which I think is well enough known, anyone would get it. 18 points, same as the second contestant, so a much better round. I was disappointed I didn't get the um, Arctic Monkeys uh, bonus question right, and also I confused red box and black box, and I said the wrong one. I could have got three more points with that. Now three and ten is? So we'll try three and ten. I never do three and ten. I've only achieved it once, and the answer was Belinda Carlisle. How did I get Belinda Carlisle? Circle in the sand. Um, uh, now I can't think of it. New order. Oh my god, I can't think of any new order songs at all. Oh yeah, of course, Blue Monday. Oh, well done. She got it. I didn't. Uh, oh, we're coming past Cobham Services and um, congestion, 60 mile limit. 
Uh, I don't want to stop, I don't need to stop, but I don't want to sit in traffic either because I'll just guzzle fuel. I'm going to take an early break and come off just here. Yeah, it's down to 40 miles an hour after the exit, so uh, yeah, I'm making the right call here. The needle has just dipped uh, below the top segment of the, um, the fuel gauge, so I'm not quite sure how many gallons that will have used. sounds so good. Oh, I was wrong. There is still a delay. Bumsy. Thought I was going to be okay. I'm not okay. As places to be go on a long journey, this is so far proving to be extremely comfortable. Huge glass house, even though the seat is in the wrong place for this country. The visibility is really quite good and I've manually twiddled that passenger mirror enough that I can see clearly what's going on behind me now. Wow, of all the things to have broken down, it's a yellow school bus. So we're now pootling closer and closer to the, uh, the NEC. We're on the M40 and there's lots of traffic and even a couple of classics. I didn't, uh, I thought the camera was rolling and it wasn't. We just went past a really nice uh, G plate MG Metro and an Austin Princess 2200 GLS, which I thought I was recording as we went past, uh, but the old GoPro start command, audio command didn't work, so yeah, that didn't happen. But the car is doing very well still. Quarter of a tank down and 70 miles in, so I'm not sure how big the fuel tank is. I could probably work things out from that later on. But we were on the M40, about 90 miles to go. This is now the furthest I've driven this car in one hit. Um, well, it looks like I'm probably going to be the first of the three of us to arrive at the NEC. Uh, my ETA is just after 1 o'clock, maybe 1.30, after I've stopped again for a, another wee pit stop in a while. Um, Ian is taking two cars to the show. He's got another car. The Foxan is on the Reliance stand, so he's had to sort of shuffle back and forth and do a bit of a run around with trains and things involved. So he's having a bit of a busy morning. But he should be here about 2.30, maybe. Steph, though, oh, I'll let her tell you this in her own words later on. I, I imagine there'll be a fair bit of beeping in this, but she's had an absolute nightmare. Message to the group last night was that she was on the way back from Paris from Retromobile in the marina, which she was hoping to take to the NEC, and she'd lost drive. And I don't know exactly what has happened, whether it's the gearbox, drive shafts, clutch, or what, but she wasn't going anywhere and uh, was trying to get things sorted out, which is uh, unfortunate, to say the very least. So, wondering what was going to happen today, turns out she's now on a plane to Newcastle as we speak, heading to a friend's house where she's going to borrow a friend's classic car and take that down to Birmingham. So she will be still on the stand with a car, just not the one she intended. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see with bated breath what she turns up with. And wish her well in her journey as well. Fingers crossed she uh, gets her okay. Okay, 66 miles to go. We've used just over a quarter of a tank of petrol, which is pretty good going actually, because well over halfway, it's about two thirds of the journey. I am going to take a quick comfort break at Oxford Services and put in one gallon of petrol, just because I don't want to be in a position where I've used too much on the way back there that I can't get to a fuel station on the way back. So, right, there's a nice steep long hill coming down towards these services, so we did actually put some speed on the car for a while as well just to see what that was like and it's really good it goes really stable at a good motorway speed fuel is this way oh oy, oy, oy. bumpy bump love that v8 rumbling regular unleaded 186.9 oh my word now we're finally at the nec itself and into the back of the bowels of the building that twin cam in front of us? I think it might be.
So we have made it at last. We have achieved Birmingham. We're inside the NEC. Finding this place was a bit harder than it was last time because there's no carpet on the floor and obviously couldn't find it. I'm on my own at the moment, so I can't really set up properly because we don't know where Ian's Ford Fairmont and Steph's mystery new arrival, which is going to be conveying her from somewhere in the north, is going to park up. So I've just put my table out, put my stand up. When they arrive, I'll put some t-shirts and hats and things out and you know, make a bit of a display of it all. Uh, in the meantime, the Crown Vic does look exceptionally good. I've been around it with my diamond bright stuff. I've uh, blacked the tires, uh, quickly uh, spritzed over and cleaned the bodywork and done the glass. And tell you what, it does look really, really good. I love this car. And it was such a good motorway cruiser as well. You just sit at 70 miles an hour, you don't even know you're moving. It's an armchair on wheels. Please have it easy in, well, these two. They don't have these cars anymore in America. Anyway, right, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, since I can't do anything until the others turn up in an hour or so, I'll take you for a little walk around what's here of the show so far. I'll give you a preview so you can see if you're going to come up to the NEC for the Lancaster Protocol Classics uh, restoration show, what you're getting in for. The border of Hall 4 next to the Classic Cars, Practical Classics and Classic Car Weekly stand, so it's an easy thing to find. Navigate by that enormous sign up there and you'll find us right next door. Then we are on the edge of Hall 3, which is the Restorer of the Year Award. I think the barn find area is over here somewhere as well. This is Peter S. Taylor and the car auction. So if you want to see some fancy shiny metal, might even be shinier than the Crown Vic, then do wander over here. We have well, first of all, Jags. Ooh, hello. Marina TC on Revolution Wheels. Wow, that looks super hot. I'm liking that a lot. And Manta, oh my word. Sorry, ignoring the Aston Martins and the very nice Jaguars, because there's a Manta, a Manta 3 litre over here. That is extremely tasty. There's too much to look at. I'll bounce back to the Range Rovers in a second, because that's also very exciting. Oh, Mark one, Mark two escorts, sorry, early minis, some lovely Volvos, some nice Mercedes, all also for sale here, obviously. 97 V70 California, not a model I'm familiar with as a special edition, the uh, lacquer has gone. Took a moment. <laughs> I've not seen a V70 estate convertible before. Now I have. I think my life is complete. And of course, we've got a recreation of the uh, the 90s BTCC type cars. Austin Healy's. Aha, Hillman's. See, there's stuff everywhere. This one is uh, not as big as the, um, the main show back in November. I think it's only got three halls rather than 17. But uh, there's still lots of stuff waiting to be found. We've got the Roots Clubs. I do love a Roots car. Ooh, we've got rotisserie. Ah, uh, I'm going to say Super Snipe. Super. <laughs> if you ever wonder what looks it looks like inside one of these things, when you, before you start cutting and welding, this is literally it. Man, that's a project and a half, but good luck to them, I'm sure they will do well. Very nice sunbeams. Ooh, little small cars. Car auctions for little things. I've seen one of these things before. Can't remember what it's called. Someone will doubtless know in the comments. Oh, it's a carver, of course it is a carver. Wooden picket recreation. Very tasty. Oh, I love that 911. Love the Mercedes even more. Oh, so much nice stuff. And a Bauer E30, sorry, E21. Roots, going back to your roots. Avenger Estate Mark 1. Oh, hello. Avenger 2 door Mark 2. Spot the difference. That's quite fun. That's a project waiting to be amazing. Unregistered Lotus Series 2 Sunbeam. <gasps> Wowie. A Lotus Series 2. Wow, okay. I'm already excited by this show. This is. This is going to be a good show. Let's wander back the other way. Turner Classics, they've got some oh, very nice metal work there. Wish my welding was as neat and tidy as that. Oh, beautiful engine there. A lot of hours of polishing gone into that. A lot of hours of polishing going into that chassis as well. That is quite delightful. Now somehow I managed to walk past with this little clown shoe. Walked straight past it a second ago. I'll definitely come and drool over this over the weekend quite a lot. It's a bit of an acquired taste, and it is a taste I have definitely acquired. One of these days I'll get one. A very, very, very nice L. So nine, oh, L44 LSE. So I don't know if it's a 93 or if it actually is just a private plate. But LSE is a long wheelbase, isn't it? The extra space in the back doors. We do like a classic Range Rover, and this is what they look like with no clothes on. That's going to be quite a, a stand. 
quite a display. I don't know if they're going to be building this thing over the weekend, perhaps. This is what the Resto Show is all about after all. The Ferrari, which is not ours, that, that threw me a lot when I came in, because I thought that was our stand. And none of us owns a Ferrari. Not yet. The YouTube money hasn't quite rolled in that fast yet. Aging Bentley might be more our, our, our cup of tea. Uh, this one here, Odd Autos, is very much our, our style of thing. Check out this bad boy. Tiny mini motorhome. I think I might have seen this at the last show, possibly. I absolutely love that. It's uh, very much a two-person, or ideally only one-person camping arrangement. Uh, ooh, DKW1000, which is not. Hello. The old two-stroke or two-cylinder. That's a Nissan Leaf engine, isn't it? I believe. That, I would love to take it for a drive. or will have a word with their owner tomorrow. Escort. Doesn't look odd from this angle, but I'm sure there's something exciting underneath. And a very short shorty uh, Mark II Golf. Excellent. And short shorty Beetle. I think we saw these at the um, November show as well, actually. What else have we got over here? Barn find area. This is super exciting. I should not be excited by a Mark V or VI Escort, but it is an estate and it's a gear, so suddenly my interest is piqued. I neither want nor need this, but I desperately want it. Mm. Cars I don't need, add it to the barn. This I could justify more readily. Need more SD1s in my life and in the garage. Hmm, such good looking cars. Don't think I need a furniture van, but you never know, it could come in handy. Damn, that is rotten, more rotten than you know what to do with. Oh, weld, start welding and weld a lot. And this is kind of fun. Ice cream van, best quality ices from Kippenham. What was it? A Bradford by Jowett, wow. More exciting by the minute, excellent. Lots of other exciting things. What is that over there? BMW 2000, I'm gonna suggest. 1800, BMW 1800, wow. These are super, super rare. They're quite hard to find parts for in this country. Oh no, this hasn't got the oblong headlights. It's a bit easier. Also, a Daimler, it's a Jag, isn't it? Not a Daimler. Wow, left-hand drive. Okay, this is an American, got the lights on it. American re-import. A lot of these did go to the States and Europe. Well, there's no information up yet. We're too early at the moment to learn anything. It's fuel injected and it's a 12. So it's all the good stuff. Two door 12 cylinder. Love it. Hummer, hummer, hummer. Oh, sorry, no, it's Hillman. What am I talking about? It's a Hillman van. Very Wallace and Grummity. With uh, Allegro seats, perhaps? No, it's only Allegro. Something of that ilk, though. Oh, there's an Allegro over there. We can go and compare. Escort, very green Escort. Uh, no, they're not Allegro seats. This Allegro is a Super, Super, on an M. Super, oh, well, that's exciting. That's more exciting. This is a Dodge. Again, no information, it's a Dodge that didn't dodge whatever smacked into that. It's had a few little impacts around it. Lost some glass. Big wraparound screen no longer there. Fabric on the seats no longer there. I don't know what the drip tray's for, but clearly the seat ceiling is <laughs> leaking in that case. Stunning interior, probably a seven or eight seater. It's a Sierra, Dodge Sierra. Wowee. A Dodge Sierra Spectator or Spectator Sierra. I don't know which around that goes. I've never seen this name badge before. And I thought I knew all the old American badges. That is amazing. What else have we got? Escort Cabrios. More Fords, RSs. And because this is the resto show, lots and lots of trade stands. So we'll bother the trade stands as much as possible during the rest of the show. Many Fords. Tickfords, okay. That's good. We'll have a proper look around later on when it's all set up. Many tools. We like tools. Old Town Autos. Lovely Plymouth, which I'm going to guess is late 40s, early 50s. It's a deluxe. It was a good guess saying late 40s, early 50s. It's 1950. Bang in the middle. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. I guess these guys are selling white wool tyres. Could come in handy. Restoration stands. Mini tools. 
big, big parts and things over here as well. A bit of garage decoration. There are many things I do need if I'll find any of them today. Oh, oh, dangerous, dangerous times. Walk, walk away, walk away, walk away with my wallet. More auto jumble. Bring your wallet, bring your parts shopping list. There's plenty for everyone. So you go scurrying around and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. I've not seen this stuff before. This is a metal cutout. So I'm guessing like high pressure water jet cut or something. CNC cutted, cutted, that's a, that's a word I'm going to use now. Uh, choose your logo, choose your poison, hang up in the garage wall. Over here in, I'm going to say Hall 5, I'm probably wrong though. Much stuff. They've not even put everything out yet, and already it's a show and a half, it's not even started yet. Ford Anglia Club. Uh, transit Van Club, is that a thing? Oh, it is a thing, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just a support vehicle. <laughs> this followed me in. It's little Prefect Woody, that's very exciting. The Ford Side Valve Club. More transits. Uh, console Capris. Now, the thing I remember about this show is it's not all shiny, perfect stuff like you find at the uh, November show. A lot of stuff is work in progress and people will be tinkering with their cars live in front of you throughout the, uh, the three days of the show. Some of these cars will turn up in big boxes and hopefully drive home at the end of the thing. So uh, yeah, it's quite an exciting show to spend a bit of time in. There's also a live stage and many, many more things. More tools, because it is a resto show, so all your tooling needs are here. Aha! I need to maybe do a bit of parts shopping here while I'm here, because uh, we could do some more toolboxes and things over in the barn. Ooh. I'm quite into the D20 series. I've not seen these ones yet. Aha. I'll definitely do a bit of shopping while I'm here. This is where we had our stand back in November, so we're a little way away from where we were previously. Got the screws everywhere. I found about five or six screws on our stand. Hopefully we didn't get a punch off it. But looking down into this hall, which I always forget the number of, there is much to see. So we'll have a quick nip down here. Oh, this is something I could do with. I wonder how much one of them would be. I'd definitely love that in the barn. And there is one rather nice bonus surprise. So I've kind of got two cars at the show without really trying, which is quite nice. You might remember this little nugget here. Quentin. Quentin the convertible. I kind of miss this car now. I did all that work to it and uh, happily parted with it. But now I'm kind of thinking, oh, I wish I kept him now. Still looks really, really good. Paint's holding up well, which I'm obviously pleased about. The roof still looks fantastic. And uh, back window, which I was obviously paranoid about, because I'm always paranoid about these windows on convertibles, still looks amazing. Ah, oh, this car does look brilliant. I hate to blow my own trumpet, but I did a nice job with this car. <laughs> I should not have sold it. Oh well, but at least the current owner is very happy and you'll come and find it in the corner of Hall 5 on the Modern Classic Executive stand, looking absolutely resplendent. I'm a little bit sad now. Shouldn't have sold you. Shouldn't have sold you, Quentin, you're too nice. It was a labour of love. I even did mugs. You can buy mugs of this car if you want to go and find a, a Quentin mug. Those are on the Redbubble site in the link below. Ah, oh, good old Quentin. I'll come and say hello to you again tomorrow. There's many other things which aren't Quentin, but are also very, very good and exciting. So, nipping down the stairs, we've got Maguire's for Polish, Land Rover, Deutsch Doctors for German cars, Rimmer Brothers for Rovers and Land Rovers and Triumphs and what have you. MG, Paddock Life, with a nice little Dino. Those are lovely. I was listening to a Car Chum podcast the other day. If you've not heard Car Chum, check it out on your usual um, podcast supplier and talk about some. Um, Mike was talking about how once, many years ago, he was offered a Dino for, he said, £40,000. I remember it as £20,000 because I was with him and we were offered it as a joint thing. And we said no. We could have bought that back then, sold it and paid our mortgages off, basically, if we'd gone halves on that thing about 10 years ago. We were idiots. Uh, more rusty metal, which is good. This is... What are you? What are you, little thing? It's Austin 7. Ah, oh, high on my hit list of cars I desperately would love to have is an Austin 7, as I keep on saying. 
very rusty. Actually, not very rusty at all. Okay, my bad, it is. It's quite rusty. <laughs> uh, Triumph 2000 Estate, is it 2000? I can't tell. Stag! I say stag like that every time. More Triumphs, MGs. And whistles through there. Bs and the new ones. Standards! Everything you could want is here. Standard, standard. I reckon that'll be back in one piece by the end of the show. They will do that, sir. Land crabs. Metros. Many, many metros. Many, mini metros, even, in fact. Now, I believe the Coupe Owners Club has got a red theme going on this week. I can see three red coupes there, so... Listen to that thing waffle. What a car. That was lovely. <laughs> uh, some serious off-roading on that cardboard box. I hope nothing breakable was in it. <laughs> uh, it's just magazines, it's fine. Land Rovers go over anything. This is a Rover Club of some kind. Oh, this is a sports register. I need to go and say hello to these guys. I need to come and join up again, actually. 200 and 400 owners club. This is a club I do rather urgently need to join. The thing is, I've got like, several of them. I've got three of them, I think, at the moment. So uh, I'll come and say hello to these guys. So, ooh, Amaranth. We've got Maestro's, Maestro Van. We've got the star of the show here. Take a bow, sir. Hi, <laughs> <I> got <laughs> The 800 club, which is featuring a 600, but that is astonishingly shiny. Looks amazing. We have got the Rover Coupe Owners Club, which of course, one that I'm a member of. An Amaranth Coupe, which is going to be fettled into life after not running for the best part of a decade over this weekend. So that'll be quite exciting. We've got the Dream Ride, so people can take you out for a ride in something super exciting of your choice. Lovely Rovers. This is, which club is this one? Uh, something with P6s. This is the P6 Rover Owners Club. Which I actually did try and join online the other day, but it wouldn't work. Now that is super shiny, as is that. Other Rovers, this is SD1 Club. All the Rovers are in this hall. I need to gravitate back to this later on during the, uh, the show. That's the P6 Club. Oh, three-door Discovery. I always love to go and have a prod over a three-door Discovery. The, oh, the blue and grey interior. Fantastic. Come and look at these things. Early Freelanders. See, I was right. Early Freelanders are now a classic. Chunky tyres, tiny wheels. I do want a set of these for mine. A lovely colour as well. So I just had a quick chat with the owners of these two fine beasts. This one is a press car. So it's original high spec from the launch period. One, oh, launch, yeah, I'll play, yeah. Um, but yours on the press fleet at Land Rover. It's been in Ginny Buckley's TV show, uh, been in magazines, auto car and so forth. This one was in Die Another Day for almost two seconds. So it's a famous screen car, kind of. Uh, we have more stuff over here. Oh, Lancaster Insurance Stand. I'll go and have a look at that in a second. Marinas of many kinds. or Camper Marina. Let the pictures do the talking here. I'm running out of breath already. Austin Morris. Is that a J? Oh, yeah, J4. J4 van. This is a cool st setup. Huh? I'm not sure which club this is. This is Enthusiasts of British Motor Vehicles. They've got a nice little setup there. And that's the uh, stage. We've got more stuff over here. The Simcas, to your heart's content. Oh, how did a Fiat Coupe become a barn find? My word. That's a 20 valve turbo. That's the best one of all. Wowzers and all that. Bit of surface road, needs a repaint, but it looks like a nice car under that. Wowee. More Fiats over there. Uh, Wartburgs and Trabants. Many Volvos, this is uh, 300s and so forth. Volvo Owners Club. I do have Volvo 700 t-shirts on my stand. If you want to come and buy a Volvo 700 t-shirt, just throw that out there. Ah, uh, Saab. Saab is a car I've never owned, but really do need to. One of these, ideally. That would make me very happy indeed. Hey, a barn find one. This is what the show is all about. Authentic barn grunge. On behind us, more Volvos. Volvo Enthusiast Club, a rival to the Volvo Owners Club, I guess. Though being Swedish, I imagine it's all quite civilised, though, within their rivalry. 
So here on the Lancaster stand, we've got another police car. I don't know if it's real or fake or what, but it says Staffordshire on it, but it's a Jag and it's got blue lights on top. Exciting. Got ourselves a Fiat and we've got ourselves a Honda Roma home. Well, Honda with a Roma home on it. Camper vans are the thing of the year at the moment and that is kind of fun. Check how tiny those wheels are. The wheelbarrows have bigger wheels than that. Right, okay, I'm going to start heading back to my stand. Hopefully one of the, or two of the others will have turned up now. We can start setting our t-shirts and mugs and so forth out for your delectation and buying pleasure. I'll get this video up and you can then have a preview of the show. Oh, more here. We have triumphs aplenty. And we've got more triumphs, even more aplenty. MX-5s, everyone loves an MX-5. Need an MX-5 at home, really. Mrs. Furious is quite keen for us to get an MX-5, incredibly. Who knew? Classic taxis, wow. Oh, beard more, okay. The way we used to be. Colourful Jags. There is a lot here. I'm going to stop talking now because there's just too much to see. I'll do a further uh, rundown of the show, hopefully during the show itself, if I get off the stand. Otherwise, this is the show to come and enjoy. Come down here from tomorrow, Thursday morning, uh, through until Sunday. Find us on the YouTuber stand in Hall 4 with Ian from um, Hubnut and Steph from iDriver Classic. We'll be welcoming you with open arms. Come and say hello. None of our cars are quite as swanky as this, but they look pretty shiny anyway, so it's all good. Thank you very much indeed, and come and say hello during the show. Take care.